Using digital images is one way we can enhance lessons with students. Finding those images is what we're going to learn about first. Flickr is my choice. Flickr without the E is my choice to find images. I like Flickr better than I like Google Images. But there's times that I need to use Google Images, especially if I need like historic documents. Flickr is great at people, places, and things. So Flickr is owned by Yahoo. You don't need to make an account just to use the pictures. You do need to make an account if you want to comment or upload your own images. So to get started, you don't need to go ahead and make an account. Now, when you come in to Flickr, you want to go to the search box and in the search, you want to go look for the advanced search feature. This is very important because we want to model for students ethical use of digital resources, and that includes images online. So in the search, find the advanced search and click on the advanced search. This is what it's going to look like. Now, up at the top, you put in the word or the words that you're searching for, and then very important at the bottom, see where it says Creative Commons. Only search within Creative Commons licensed content. In a very layman's term, that means as a person uploaded the, the image, they said put it under Creative Commons that you can use it for your projects. Do, do what you want with the image, just don't resell it and make money. That's really kind of the, that now if the lawyer was here, go into a lot more detail. But that's really kind of the essence of the uh, Creative Commons. We need uh, uh, to model this for students, and we need to make sure students are using images that are licensed under Creative Commons. There's nothing worse than they make an entire presentation, and right in the middle of their image, there's a big water spot that says, you know, I stock photo or something like that. By clicking here, we are going to eliminate the ones that are copyrighted only. And I did a search. Oh, never, ever, ever, ever search while connected to a projector in front of students. I will tell you this search, I, I put in school one day and everything's fine. And the next day, an image appears that you don't want to be seen. I cannot stress that enough. So I put in abandoned school. And here, here are some of them. Here's what I get. And the pages go on and on and on. But you can see right up at the top in the middle showing things that are licensed under Creative Commons. So I'm good. But these are called thumbnails. Never ever save these. You need to go pick out which one you want and make, click on it to make the image larger. Okay. Now, in a, lot of, a lot of people are used to taking their mouse, right clicking on the image, and then saving. That doesn't always work on Flickr because there's they have a way in Flickr that you can actually comment. So you actually have to look, if you look in the upper, right underneath the Flickr, in the upper left-hand corner, there's something called Actions. And that's what we need to click on. You click on Actions, and then you want to select View All Sizes. You want to see all the sizes. And we know we're okay. It's okay to use this because it says some rights reserved. That's okay. That means it's licensed under Creative Commons. If it wasn't and it was copyrighted, they wouldn't let you download it. So that's really important to know the difference. And depending how your computer's set up, you may have to actually check that box each time. Depends. Mine stays on there, but sometimes you have to go back and remember that in an advanced search. So I always download the largest size of the photo. And then I can always make it small, smaller, but if you download the small, you try to make it big and fill up your whole screen, and it gets all pixelated. So take the bigger one. We can always go smaller. All right. Then what happens? Look look at that name. It's all numbers, combination of letters. That's how they number or name, I guess, the um, all the images on Flickr. So you probably want to think about renaming that. You'll never remember what it is. Save your file and say OK. And again, here's Google Images. Google Images, look over to the right, it has its own advanced image search. And so you want to make sure you can go ahead and say Creative Commons. The problem, the big difference between Flickr and Google 
images. Google Images is actually is is organized by a piece of software that crawls through the internet looking for different images. Flickr, the people when they uploaded their images, they tagged and put the labels on the image. I think that's why you find better, closer matching ones on Flickr than I seem to find on Google Images. More seems to get through on Google Images, you know, the things that you don't want to see. All right, here's the advanced search on uh, Google, there's a lot of features. There's even more, I bet. And you can go and find exactly what you're looking for. The key after the top five, the, the top five, the, ne the next one to look at is usage rights. Return images that are, and then you select what you want. You can even select images that are uh, appropriate to be used commercially if you want to. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you look for that. Oh, there it is, labeled for reuse, commercial use, reuse with modification, and the, the, the best one is labeled for commercial reuse with modification. Make sure you show your students this. It's not okay to say, so where did you get your picture? Oh, I found it on the internet. We sh they should be citing where they get their images from. Okay, now this is Google, and obviously put in abandoned school and I get different things, but um, I also got 6,570 results. So again, I do go to Google Images if I need historical documents, um, historical images, things like that, because where Flickr is better for the contemporary people, places, and things. Here, you can right-click and then save the image as or whatever you'd like to do with that image. Again, any size, anything you want. So you can um, really narrow your search and get what, oh, got one labeled for reuse with modification, and it comes up to that same uh, school. Image Chef, this is a fun site not to be used with students, unfortunately. I wish they would make um, an EDU side of it. What it does is it gives you templates and then you put your words in there, and then it can create a graphic. So let's say you weren't working with vocabulary words, and it was uh, during February. You could go ahead and put all your vocabulary words on uh, uh, candy hearts, and just save the images, and you could go ahead and put those into a PowerPoint presentation on your interactive whiteboard. It's just a fun way to work with words. But they added some images in here, virtual tattoos, things like that, that just aren't quite appropriate for all students. So this is a great one. If you want to make up some pictures with, you, with your specific words, this is a great place to go, imagechef.com. Now, Picasa is Google's uh, digital image manager, and it is really an amazing tool. Free, of course we love free, uh, theme that runs through many of my things. And you can create your own uh, albums or you can also create web albums if you want to. This is wow for me. What it is, is it can go through all of your images and then it also has face recognition. It can recognize the people in all your pictures and then it asks you a question, is this so-and-so? And so, and you just check, yes, that's so-and-so, yes, that's so-and-so. It's really very interesting. Now, Snapfish has been around a long time, and this is was designed to have you upload your images, and then you can share them with whoever you'd like. This is more security built in, um, so you can lock them down, but you, there's also things like, I am, Maybe they have a different name for them now, but rooms. So you could actually make a room. So if your your family could have one room and everybody could upload to that to that collection. And so this is nice. Of course, the people at Snapfish would love if you bought their books, their coffee mugs, their calendars with all your cute little pictures. So that's one of the reasons they give you this service for free because they want you to buy their everything else with your pictures. And I will tell you, I bought a book once, and it, they, it is beautiful. All right, Picnic is another. Uh, this Now, the great part about Picnic for photo editing is it's online. No software to download. You know, Photoshop is awesome. Photoshop Elements is great. But that software that has to be installed. This, online, go ahead and 
edit your pictures. There's some really nice filters, frames, and things that you can do to your, to your images to make them look better. Photoshop.com does have kind of a, I'm going to call it the light version, where you can uh, do a number of basic photo editing things on Photoshop.com. If you want to get into really, really deep editing, you need the software. And I would suggest if you're an artist, you want to definitely know how to use Photoshop. If you're just a lay person like me, I love Photoshop Elements, which is their um, smaller, less features, but it's just perfect for my Photoshop editing needs. Discovery Education, which is at Discovery Streaming now, they have images that are in part of their collection. So if your school district has a subscription to Discovery Streaming, there's images in there, and a lot of people don't know that. The great part about it is it's safe, meaning if you want students to be searching around in those images, I'd feel so much better about that than just sending them loose on the Internet. Another option, too, depending on the age of the students that you work with, so a lot of teachers go out and find a collection of maybe 20, 25 images, put them in one folder, and then the students only can pick from those images. That's another way to get around so they don't come across bad images online. It's going to happen. You have to be careful. But if you put them in a folder and keep them away from surfing, maybe less chance it's going to happen. National Archives is filled not only with images, but entire lesson plans that you can use, audio clips in some cases, video clips, but very, very rich. They're trying to get everything out of the vaults and into the hands of the people, and they're trying to do that with the with the lessons and other things. So really, if you need if you need images, historic images, this is a great place to go. This is another great place, Library of Congress, and they have all different things for you to come in. They have collections and uh, different libraries, and you can come in and explore really rich primary source documents. The only thing is I have trouble searching within the Library of Congress. I, I don't I never seem to get to exactly what I need, so what I do is I actually use Google's search engine, and I search for the topic I'm looking for, and then I put in LOC in the search. And that does get me to the Library of Congress, but it seems to filter out um, the resources much better than the search on the Library of Congress. That's just me. There's images everywhere. Anytime that you can use images to help students better understand content, that is great. If you can take your own images, if students can go out and capture images, that's even better. But remember, be safe, follow copyright, and use that advanced searching. Thanks.